tired of being blamed for the bad sister wife. A bad sister wife is someone who just monopolizes the husband so he has no time for anybody else. I got beans, greens, potatoes. You name it! At the beginning of the episode, above a sweet rolling piano piece, Cody tells us... There's kind of been a line in the sand with the family and some people are crossing over and some people aren't. These depressing episodes, it's time to do a crossing the line chart of pure speculation. Remember, I have no insider knowledge whatsoever. I'm just going off vibes. Oh my God. Go, 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 go. Didn't we do this yesterday? It's time to play Who Crossed the Kidney Line? So Logan was mentioned as being one of only two OG kids Robin was willing to talk to last episode. I think it's safe to say, Daddy Logan has crossed the line and taken a sip of that sobbin wine. Aspen has not for tender obsessed Grampy Cody any chicken nuggets. He probably doesn't even remember she exists. I'm keeping her over on Team Christine. There is not a single part of my body that thinks Cody has been supportive of Leon. And Leon did go to Christine's wedding. Now Maddie has not been mentioned by Cody at all in multiple seasons despite her many grand tenders. I have to leave Maddie over on Team Christine. Nobody questions whether McKelty's crossed the line. She did an Olympic size jump over it before Robin even finished drawing it. She is going right here under Team Cobbin. Janelle and Christine's boys have all made it clear where their allegiance stands. Cody may have favored them as teenagers, but as adults, he has largely written them all off. I assume mostly due to jealousy over their full heads of hair. It must eat him alive that none of them have offered to shave their heads, and add to his patch of ramen. Yummy. If you haven't been keeping up with the off-show drama, Gwen recently said on her Patreon that Christine told her Cody didn't love her. Oof. My sapphic sister, you didn't cross the line. You levitated and moonwalked over it. After the way Cody treated her life-threatening spinal surgery, I would vomit all over my favorite Cubs jersey if I put Isabel on Team Kotex. No, she is staying on Team Christine. She's gonna be sticking with the parent who didn't refer to her spinal surgery as a vacation. Sadly, Savannah has been forgotten this season. No call on Christmas, plus, she has to see her stepsister, who her own father spends time with and raises day in and day out every day at school. She's gonna be over on Team Christine, which leaves Truly, who is far too innocent to participate in this game show. And thanks for playing Who Crossed the Kidney Line? All right, so back to the episode. Christina's telling us that since she dumped Cody's ass, she gets to celebrate Easter again. Cody decided a while ago, years and years and years ago, that Easter was just too pagan for him. Y'all yeah, wanna tell <laughs> Yeah, I want to tell him. And we get this segment where Cody again has incorporated Jewish traditions into his cobbled together belief system. Wait a second, we shouldn't be celebrating Easter. We should be celebrating Passover. See, what I like to do is I like to treat my religion like a buffet. Take a little Christianity, a little bit of Judaism, a little bit of Mormonism, top it off with that sweet the man gets to however many wives he wants sauce. Mm. And we hear once again, we've heard this over and over and over again, that once Robin came into the family, even though Cody didn't like celebrating Easter, suddenly Cody was okay with it. When Robin came into the family, she's like, well, my kids celebrate Easter, so I'll just go to my mom's house. And of course, Cody didn't want her to leave. She had certainly a lot of leverage and there were things that got better, definitely. She acknowledges that Robin coming into the family did do a lot of things to improve their family. And she says this despite how Robin has done nothing but paint Christine as a horrible monster the last two seasons. And I just love that Christine is taking the high road because that leaves the low road for me. Beep, beep. We get a hilarious sequence of clips where Robin's pretending she doesn't know why Cody changed his mind. I don't know why, you know, why it was different. Maybe it was just new ideas, I don't know. Maybe it was new ideas. There is a happy reunion of sorts at Christine's house. It's terrible iPhone footage, but it's still nice to have some lightheartedness. And before we get back to the monotony of Cody bullshitting us constantly, I have to point out Aspen's train conductor hat. 
Oh my God, nice hat, Aspen. Like, where did you get it? Mm, nope. I kind of like it because it's got some edge to it. You know me, I gotta have a little bit of edge. Mary Brown. It's hardcore. I have a life with Robin and her children. And right now that's really, I I'm okay with that. <laughs> Nothing has ever been more clear than the fact that you're super okay with living a monogamous life with Robin and her kids. It is hard to listen to the verbal diarrhea coming out of Cody's mouth in confessional. This is exactly what Christine and Janelle's plan is. To separate me from my children so they can have them all to themselves. You just said you are perfectly happy without them. You can't even remember all of their names or their birthdays or that they exist. It literally hurts my heart when I think about the fact that we're not doing these things together. Oh, poor Robin. Sent a text to the kids not to talk to her again. And now she doesn't get to have the family gatherings that she wants so bad. Cause everybody cries. We're back in Parowan, Utah, and I am loving the shots we get of the Parowan Cafe and the community theater. We cleaned out this space here. See? I like the Jen stuff this season, but I feel like we've been cleaning out this carriage house for around nine months. Is there anything else we can have these two do? I see a couple bikes in the corner. Can we not watch them biking around Parowan? My best friend. Or maybe they could put on that trench coat and pretend to be one really tall audition person at the community theater auditions. appreciate Jen's 14-year-old boy humor. Hi, contractor. What's in it? You can do your boy. <laughs> 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 there have been times that I've had a good relationship like this with different members of my family. Didn't we do this yesterday? You know, Jen and I have that trust. I don't have that with other members of my family. Well, Mary, it is hard to trust someone who scoped your husband out while they were married to your brother. Oh. I forgot, this show doesn't acknowledge that ever. I don't know what to do with a marriage that's supposed to be eternal, but doesn't have any fire. Meh, there isn't any fire there. I pee peed all over it and I don't like the smell of piss ashes. Robin plays the delusional card. If Mary just sticks around long enough and we get through what's going on with Christine, Cody and Janelle figure out whatever they're gonna do, that they will have a chance to work it out. The denial is strong with these folks. Mary and Robin are like Jedi denialists. Every time the truth tries to hit them, they block it with their lightsaber. Apparently Jen's husband is so cool with Mary, he washes her car. Jen's husband washed my car today. He does like these little things that a guy normally would do for his wife. Either Mary's trolling us or they're for sure in a throuple. I'm sorry, I never gave that idea much when I saw people joking about it online. I was like, <laughs> that's kind of funny. But now I think, oh yeah, these are some weird dynamics. Or the other possibility is that Mary is their sugar daddy and Sean likes to make daddy happy. Don't go weird. Oh, Mary. You busted me. Uh, but you're the one that made it weird. They take us back to when Mary told Cody she was moving her LuLaRoe racks up to Utah. I'm fine with Mary moving her business to Parowan. I really was hoping that he would react a little bit more. <sighs> he did react, Mary. He threw a party and him and Nathan did a choreographed dance to Freedom by George Michael. <laughs> My whole life seems to center around mine and Robin's household. Why are we getting this audio? They may as well roll a clip of him saying his sh is the same color as his last name. Then, in confessional, Cody, who has spent the last two seasons all over Christine for leaving him, tells us. So it's been weird because I'm married to the love of my life. I've got these other situations. So Christine was right. Robin is the love of your life. And you literally stopped giving about the other three. You just called them situations. Oh, come on! I am so mad. <laughs> Why are producers in this confessional asking him, hey, Cody, what the fuck is up with all the shit you've been saying the last two seasons? Immediately after admitting Robin is the love of his life, he says, I think me and 
and Janelle can reconcile. Janelle and I, I do believe we could reconcile. I think I can convince her to take my kidney scraps. I really do. Yeah, like she has really low standards, so I think I can use those low standards to convince her to stay. Cody tries to insult Janelle. Christine has so much influence over Janelle. Uh, I just think it's pathetic. Let's be real. Cody knows the world thinks Robin's got his balls stored in a special edition testicle townhouse of her Christmas Dickens collection, and it bothers him, so he's projecting onto Janelle. Christine gets a rental because this is what the show has become now. Christine getting rentals for their second fake holiday celebrations. Five seconds later, I'm not gonna lie, I was exaggerating for comedic effect, kind of a thing, but no! Janelle tells us it's freaking July! It's July, but Christine and I are talking about the holidays why are you people doing this? Just say we're having a nice lasagna dinner. I'm sick of the holiday talk anyways. Accountability is something that Janelle and Christine do not know anything about. This bitch can't be serious. Was that for real? What about your accountability for abandoning your entire family? Christine and Janelle sit down for some adult conversation away from the kids. And Christine asked Janelle what it was like living in the RV on Coyote Pass. You know, he never came till 7, 637. And then he would always have to leave in the morning to help get Solinari ready for school. Thank God Christine calls this behavior out. I don't remember a time ever where Cody left Robin's house to come over to my house to help get my kids off to school. To be fair, Christine, he told us last episode he never wanted you in his life, and he thinks that makes him the good guy. And then, thank God, Queen Christine comes in for the win. I'm tired of being blamed for the bad sister wife. A bad sister wife is someone who just monopolizes the husband so he has no time for anybody else. A bad sister wife takes her kids away from her husband. Robin's not guilty of that. Right, because Robin is a perfect angel. Have you ever heard of angel talk? It's like that constipation talk where you wait for the words to come out and every delayed syllable is like a little piece of heaven. Robin's just loyal and Christine just wasn't. Cody, go tell Robin to move into the barn dominium while you bang some 30 year old you met on JewishMormonChristianSingles.com and see how loyal she is. Hell, spend the next two years ignoring all five of her kids and see if she doesn't divorce you and take half of your assets. Aurora, Ari, Saul, and Robin all go over to Mary's and we watch them play on a swing set in Mary's backyard. We get probably for the first time in a long time a storyline with one of Robin's kids. Aurora is 20 years old. She's just visiting with a guy. I'm okay with him. I just have to put on the intimidation face. If you're gonna take my precious oldest daughter out, Oh, I don't count them anymore. If you're gonna take my precious oldest jewel out, I'm gonna have to intimidate you. That's right. I'm not afraid to plug this in and make it hot. I might even curl your hair without your consent. Back at tea time, Janelle, who I was kind of on her side when she was like, yo, Christine, don't be feeling sorry for me. And then... Like you have to know, I would consider a plural marriage again. I like it. I like plural marriage. Christine's face when Janelle says she's down with plural marriage again is priceless. You really would? Yeah. What a great idea. <gasps> would you really? You would go down that whole marriage path again. Oh my God. Then I have to admit, Janelle has said some things in this episode that made me give her the side eye, but the way she ends this episode by absolutely stripping Cody Bear and reading his soul. He's not pining in any way for the family that he's lost. I feel God in this chilies tonight. Except for when his ego is involved and it makes him look bad. What a way to end the episode. I couldn't have said it better myself. Well, meet me back here next week to recap episode 11 because we need each other. We're not gonna survive without each other.